Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. Let's do a 2024 MPB shortstop tier list. We did a catcher tier list not too long ago and you guys seem to like it. Obviously, there's always going to be some disagreement and debate with these types of videos, but I feel like it's a good way to have in-depth discussions about the players for some of the more dedicated Japanese baseball fans while also introducing these guys to uh, people who are new to MPB. So it's kind of a you know, big tent target audience I can get. And I'm not going to do every single position because that's just going to take way too much time. But with some of these like premium positions, you know, catcher, shortstop, center, they have a lot of nuance and interesting analysis points. So that's why we're doing shortstop today. Uh, I've selected each team's primary shortstop for the 2024 season. If they play multiple guys, then maybe I have more than one. But, uh, you know, shortstop is one position where I would say Japan has kind of lagged behind um, not just MLB but you look at like the United States and, and Latin America when it comes to player development you know maybe I'm a little, a little bit too harsh because there have been some amazing players in recent decades um, you know but in most eras of MPB I, I feel like shortstop has not been a particularly stacked position part of that could just be biology obviously Japanese players are smaller than American and Latin players so you're never going to see some freak athlete like Ellie De La Cruz or O'Neill Cruz come out of Japan um, and there have been actual strong eras like the 2000s into the 2010s you had Munenori Kawasaki, Kazuma Tsui, uh, Nakajima, Toritani, uh, Nishioka, Hayato Sakamoto you know that was obviously a, a pretty elite crew um, but you know just the the amount of quality hitters at the position is pretty low. Uh, it's very much a defense first position in MPB, kind of like how it was in MLB before the 90s or 2000s when, you know, the A-Rods or Chulowitzkis of the world kind of revolutionized the position in terms of size and offensive output. Um, so MPB has a lot more Ozzy Smith, Omar Vizquel types on the higher end of the spectrum than, say, you know, A-Rod or Corey Seager types. And, you know, I, I like to compare a guy like Hayato Sakamoto to Cal Ripken Jr. Um, and, and Sakamoto has transitioned to third base at this point in his career, but I do think he is indisputably the greatest shortstop in MPB history. He's basically the only one that has been truly uh, a five-tool player for his entire career. Like, you know, Kazuma Tsui or uh, Hiroyuki Nakajima, Takashi Toritani, those guys had incredible peaks. They had great careers, but I think Sakamoto is really the only one who has put it all together for the longest period of time. Um, and right now, there's no heir apparent to him as far as like who's going to be the next Japanese shortstop superstar. Uh, Rui Munayama of Meiji University is the top prospect of this upcoming 2024 draft class, but he profiles more like a Sosuke Genda or a Takashi Toritani. You know, I don't see him as a guy with like 30, 40 ho homer upside like Sakamoto. Um, I'd love to be proven wrong, but he doesn't seem like he has the power to me. Um, so, th so that's why I say shortstop is one area where Japan could improve in their development at a youth level. Uh, and I'm not in a position to say, you know, why they don't have as many plus bats there. I imagine part of that is that there is a, a kind of cookie cutter approach. Um, you know, as far as like if a Seiya Suzuki comes along and he was playing shortstop uh, in his youth, they're like, oh, well, you don't really have the build. We'd rather put you in, in corner outfield. So, you know, there probably are guys that could have blossomed into a really good shortstop, but they just never got the chance because they were moved to third base or corner outfield. Um, but I'm getting a little bit off track here. That's kind of an abstract discussion anyway. So um, today our job is to put these current MPB shortstops in 2024 into a tier list. So uh, we have six tiers here, elite, all-star, above average, average, borderline starter, and bench player. I think those are all pretty self-explanatory. And let's begin with one player for, you know, some of these categories. So we have, um, you know, we can set the parameters and really understand what we're dealing with. Right off the bat, Sosuke Genda of the Seibu Lions. He is the man for Samurai Japan. Uh, and even though he has never hit above league average in his career, his offensive floor is just so so high. Like he is always in this 85 to 95 weighted runs created plus range, a mid 600s, low 700s OPS guy. Um, you know, basically he's a pure slap hitter. 
He lets his legs do all the work, and in his prime, he was consistently stealing 30-plus bases. So the overall offensive value is pretty high for a guy that doesn't have any power. But the main thing with him is obviously that he's an elite defender. Like, putting up 20 defensive runs saved, 20 ultimate zone rating basically every year. The eye test obviously checks out as well. He makes the routine plays, he makes the difficult plays look easy, uh, especially when he's coming in on a ball and then makes like a quick running throw, uh, running backwards into the outfield for an over-the-shoulder catch. He makes everything look so effortless and so smooth, rarely makes, you know, double-digit errors on the season, um, and he's very quick turning double plates. You know, helps that he has another great fielder um, in, in Shuta Tonosaki beside him, but yeah, like, Genda is honestly one of the best defensive shortstops of all time, not just in MPB, but anywhere. He's racked up four to five, even six war seasons, uh, and we we know just how much he provides uh, stability and reliability, right? Because uh, even at the WBC, you know, he breaks his pinky finger sliding into second base. Uh, but then he only missed two games because he wanted to play the rest of the tournament. That's how badly he wanted to help Japan. And when the regular season started, he was out for two months. So truly a fighter. He played through a, a two-month injury, basically during the World Baseball Classic. And I think the speed component of his game is starting to fade away at this point. Um, there's obviously going to be regression as he enters his mid-30s, but Soska Genda, I can easily say, is an elite caliber shortstop. Now, for somebody at the very bottom, that's actually kind of tough because for everyday players, I can't really think of anyone who is like, oh, he's terrible. Um, but I would say probably anybody for the DNA Base Stars. I have... Um, Yota Kyoto here as kind of the face of the team. Um, but, you know, boy, do the Bay Stars have a lot of guys they play at shortstop. Um, they have Yamato, they have Keito Mori, they have the aforementioned Kyoda, they have Shibata, they have Hayashi, they have the rookie Ishikami. You know, they can rotate those guys all they want, but their shortstop situation has been among the worst in the league for like three to four years at this point, and there really is no answer. Like, Yamato is the veteran uh, and it seems like they always you know want to try somebody else but then they keep reverting back to him uh because they know what they're going to get out of him and like Yamato when he first came uh into the league with the Hanshin Tigers he was kind of this super utility hybrid who could play some center field some second base some shortstop he was very athletic and rangy but eventually he just became like a full-time shortstop and he was an okay hitter I guess like not good by any means but he wasn't unplayable thanks to the defense now, nowadays, though, like, the defense um, is starting to regress. It's not what it used to be. They even have him at first base sometimes, which I do not understand at all. Like, the only value he has is with his glove, so I don't see why you would take him out of the middle infield. Um, and his bat is just not good at all. You know, he's good for a pinch hit single every now and then, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, he has to be in the bottom tier, bench tier. I mean, not just, not just Yamato. I'm talking about every single base star shortstop. Um, you know, it, it's too bad that Keito Mori is turning out to be kind of a bust. Um, he hasn't really been able to take, take that next step. Uh, and then they recently drafted Hayashi and Ishikami. They're just not MPB caliber players, in my opinion, at least not right now. Part of the problem DNA has is that they're so bad defensively everywhere else that they can't really afford to move anyone. You know, like Keita Sano, Tyler Austin, Yoshitomo Tsutsugo, they're first base left field, which means Shugo Maki, who is getting better at second base, but would probably still be better suited at like first or third base. He needs to always be at second base. And then the same goes for Toshiro Miyazaki. He's not a great third baseman, would probably be better at first base, but they don't have anywhere else to put him. Uh, so they just have zero flexibility anywhere else on the diamond, which means because, you know, they're trying to squeeze as much offense out of those positions as possible. And then shortstop almost becomes an afterthought. So they just have to keep rotating guys based on who's the hottest. Um, and honestly, I think they should trade for someone or, you know, somebody I, I would like them to give a shot to more is Naoto Chino, uh, still fairly young, sort of a utility guy that has filled in at shortstop before he's been killing it on the farm this year is he going to give you stellar defense no but neither do the others uh and he does actually pack a punch he has a more traditional slugger approach which if you can tap into that 
Um, you know, maybe he's below average defensively, but you can have a plus bat with 10 to 15 homers. I just don't really see the point of trying these guys who are just average defenders at best with super low ceilings offensively. You're basically punting at that point. So, you know, that was kind of longer than I thought talking about the Bay Stars. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you, you Yokohama fans know better than I do, but yeah, it's, it's not pretty. And then I want to have somebody in the middle here, like average or above average, maybe. Uh, I feel like Hideki Nagaoka might be that guy. You know, Seiya Kinami for the Hanshin Tigers, if I'm basing it off last year's results, it would he would be a perfect candidate to be dead average. But then looking at his full resume, like including this year, he's off to a slow start. I feel like Kinami is kind of below average because uh, last year was kind of almost a flash in the pan uh, and I didn't rate him that highly even when you know he did establish himself as an everyday player during their Japan series run like you know uh, he put together competitive ABs he had some memorable clutch moments in there and the defense didn't look bad but you know getting into some of the advanced numbers he had exactly zero UZR last year which is fine at a premium position but DRS actually had him at negative 11 uh, and so far this year, UZR has him at minus three and DRS has him at minus seven. So he's probably below average defensively. Uh, and then as a hitter, he's, you know, very much a prototypical slap hitter. He's not even that fast. So not going to do much on the base paths. Um, I will say he is pretty disciplined. A lot of slap hitters get way too aggressive swinging at everything, but he's a bit more patient, which might just be a product of him playing in Okada's system, which does stress kind of working the count and trying to walk. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Kinami is a, a borderline starter. Like, I personally didn't like the decision to move Takumi Nakano to second base last year. I know it's all fun and games now because he won a gold glove there and they won the Japan series, but I think Nakano was an adequate shortstop with a lot of room to improve. Uh, but either way, I do think the Tigers should go should go for Rui Munayama in the draft this year to try to upgrade over Kinami. Okay, let's just keep building out the list from here. Let's just go in order now. Uh, Atsuki Tomosugi of the Lote Marines. He is in his second professional season now. Yudai Fujioka has been the Marine shortstop for a while, uh, except that short stretch where uh, Adani Hechevaria became kind of a stopgap. But the Marines management didn't really like how the their infield defense kind of crumbled as the year went on last season. So they started shuffling these guys around this year, moved Fujioka to second, moved uh, Captain Shogun Nakamura to third, and then shortstop kind of became up for grabs between Kenta Chatani and Tomosugi, the younger guys. Uh, and obviously Tomosugi has won the battle. And it's kind of funny to me that Chatani, when you look at his build, he's really tall. He looks like he'd hit for way more power, but he doesn't. So Tomosugi, who's much smaller, he has more of the old school Japanese shortstop physique. Um, he, he doesn't have too much competition there. You know, as long as he plays solid defense and keeps a baseline, you know, de decent baseline for his hitting. I think he's probably going to lock down the position for the full season. Um, he is a slap hitter. He doesn't have a professional home run yet, and he's probably not going to have one for a while. Uh, so don't expect anything in the power department. But he is pretty fast, um, and, and his bat-to-ball ab ability is very consistent. When you look at things like, say, zone contact rate or whiff rate, very consistent so far in the two years. So I would say he's probably going to give you a low 600s OPS, and then defensively, you know, both UZR and DRS uh, has him at a little above average. So Tomosugi, I think, deserves to be in the average tier. He is an average MPB shortstop. Next is Kaito Muramatsu uh, for Chunichi. Another second-year player. He looked terrible in his rookie season. Sub-500 OPS in a pretty decent sample. Uh, moving between second and short, he was a negative war player. But he has really hit the ground running in 2024, surprisingly. Made headlines in early May when he went 9 for 10 over a two-game stretch. Uh, and overall on the year, he's actually hitting 333 with a 767 uh, OPS. So, you know, that is very much helped by a BABIP over 400. He's not going to hit this well forever, especially with a ground ball rate approaching 60%. But, you know, he's making a lot more hard contact. Um, and, and I think he does have the ability to sustain close to league average offense. Uh, and then defensively, he rated very well at second base last year, not so much at shortstop, but this year he's made huge strides. Both UZR and DRS has him as one of the top 
defenders in the league so far. Uh, and so I'm going to put him in the average tier alongside Tomasugi. I'm going to put him in front of him. I didn't expect this kind of hot start from him, but, um, you know, he's, he's doing a great job so far for the Chinese Dragons. Okay, Makoto Kadawaki. Makoto Kadawaki is interesting. He took the Giants shortstop job after like 15 years of Hayato Sakamoto locking down that position. That alone gives him a pretty sick quote. You know, in the future, like, hey, I took the job from the best shortstop in Japanese history as Sakamoto was forced to third base, which I think was the right move for his future with Sakamoto's defense declining. But Kadawaki himself is, he's kind of a mixed bag. Like, when it comes to his defense, you don't need any numbers or metrics to tell you that he's elite. Just watch the highlights. He makes highlight reel plays all the time. He has incredible range. Uh, And when he was playing third base last year, we saw he has a strong arm as well, making diving plays, getting right up quickly, and then firing it over uh, to second and first. But he's now the primary shortstop, and obviously the Giants can feel really secure in his glove. But the question becomes, can he hit? Because if you look at his month-by-month splits last year, they were kind of night and day. I mean, he had an OPS below 400 until early July, I think. Um, and, and that's when he finally started to adjust and figure things out. He was able to get uh, an OPS in the 700s overall for the second half. So if he were to maintain that second half production level for a full season, we're talking about an elite player, right? Absolutely, with the defense included. But, you know... Here in 2024, we once again see that his bat is just not quite there. He has upped the walk rate uh, and some of the process numbers like his chase rate have improved a lot. So I think he is, you know, close to a league average hitter um, probably at the end of the year. But what we see so far is that he's not quite a complete hitter yet. And maybe he really is just kind of a second half player. But even if that's the case, like that means he's not giving you any production in the first half. So Kadawaki, I don't really feel good putting him in average with Muramatsu and Tomosugi. I think he's better than those guys. So he has to go in above average for me. I think his ceiling is just a lot higher. uh, And I have seen more of him like on the U24 national team. He had a walk off hit against Korea in the finals. I think he has the potential to play for the senior national team someday as well, either as a utility man or just a pure shortstop if he can develop, you know, kind of a level of consistency like Soska Genda. So for those reasons, I am going to have him in above average tier, but I'm definitely keeping a close eye on his hitting. Still has a lot of room for improvement, though I will say he sometimes gives me Masataka Yoshida vibes with his stance. So my expectations are pretty high. Next is Kenta Imamiya for SoftBank. Imamiya might just be elite. Imamiya might be elite. Like, he's not really the type of guy you think of when you hear, hey, elite shortstop. But for much of his career, um, he's kind of just been a quiet bunt specialist that gets overshadowed by all the superstars in Fukuoka, like Yuki Yanagita, Alfredo Despaine, Kodai Senga. You know, Imamiya was part of all those championship teams too, and you kind of forget about him. Um, He has a lot more power than the average Japanese shortstop. He almost has 100 career home runs now, and I'm sure he would have surpassed that already if he didn't have 400 career bunts. But what makes Imamiya so interesting, so odd in a way, is that he has these random spikes where his production just goes through the roof. Like, we're used to him quietly putting up a 90 to 95 WRC plus with like, you know, 1.5 to 2 war. But in 2017, he hit 14 homers with 4.7 war. In 2022, he had a 130 WRC plus with four and a half war. And so far in 2024, he has the best walk rate of his career. He has the best chase rate of his career. And he's back to that 2022 level with a 129 WRC plus. He's on pace for like four to five war again, uh, playing fantastic defense as well. So I did kind of joke a couple of seasons ago that, hey, the, the Hawks signing Freddie Galvis must have lit a fire under him because, you know, he was kind of he was going to lose his job coming off a terrible down year in 2021. And so maybe that's what enabled to, enabled him to have such an outlier season. But now if he's replicating that level, that tells me, you know, Imamiya might just be really good. He's not that old either. He's only 32, which, you know, compared to some of these other guys is old, but he still has three years left at the very least of a, of a good level, I would say. 
Um, and so, yeah, I, I feel like Imamiya doesn't really get the credit he deserves, unless it's in this kind of weird context of like, oh, he's such a great bunter, he's one of the best bunters of this generation. Like, come on, there's way more to this guy's game than just bunting. So Imamiya, I will have to put him in elite right now. Um, last year, he was kind of average to below average. So that's why, again, he's kind of hard to rate. But for 2024, I think he's elite. Next is Hideki Nagaoka of the Swallows. Uh, I, I will say when Nagaoka first burst onto the scene in 2022, I was very impressed. Uh, the rate numbers maybe weren't great, but he almost hit double digit homers as a 20 year old while playing a high level shortstop. That's not easy to do. Uh, and I think he really helped lengthen that lineup for Yakult um, when they made it to the Japan series. Like it wasn't just Shiomi, it wasn't just Murakami, Santana, Yamada, Osuna, the usual suspects that pitchers had to worry about. They also had to be on their toes for the number eight hitter because Nagaoka does have the power to put one over the fence. Uh, that being said, he has been really disappointing, uh, or at least he was disappointing in 2023. He didn't make any gains. He took a step backwards, uh, and he was actually among the worst qualified hitters in the league. But so far in 2024, he's on the rise again, has a WRC plus over 115. His ratios are very good. His BABIP has actually been very low throughout his career so I wouldn't be surprised if he has a year like this where he gets a little more batted ball luck and maybe hits like 280 with a 700 OPS uh, at, a, at a hitter's park of course instead of like 230 with a 600 OPS um, the defense at least according to the advanced numbers hasn't been that good this year but that could just be a small sample size issue because he was very good in the past uh, his backhand in particular is rating very poorly this year but yeah, I feel like Nagaoka, if we look at his whole resume, he is somewhere between, you know, kind of like borderline starter to average. Um, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he is so young and I do think he pushes himself more than a lot of the other shortstops who say, okay, I'm a slap hitter. I have a, sl I have a slap hitter build and that's all I'm ever going to be. Nagaoka actually tries to have a slugging component, which I respect. So I'm going to put him in average. Kotaro Kuribayashi for Oryx. Kotaro Kuribayashi is, he's a fun one. He's also very young, same as Nagaoka, I think, 22 years old. Uh, and he's always been one of these guys where the numbers don't really do him justice, in my opinion. Like, watching him on the biggest of stages in the playoffs these last couple of years, I would always watch him, like, battle and battle and then dump a single against some of the toughest pitchers in the league. And then I look at his regular season stats and I'm like, how did this guy hit 220? But since 2023, I think we're finally seeing his numbers catch up to his talent because Koribayashi definitely has the ability to be one of the best batters at the shortstop position for like the next decade or so. He is a very, very special talent, in my opinion. Uh, very strong at 6'2", 210. Uh, he's a big guy. And he can hit double-digit home runs. We've already seen that. And he does have these short stretches, these short bursts, where he's like one of the best hitters in the league including right now so far in may uh he's hitting 354 with a 175 wrc plus also walking more than he strikes out so i think koribayashi is just you know straight up the best hitter on this list overall even more so than imamiya um i trust that koribayashi is going to be an above average bat going forward the issue is he doesn't have the best mobility he doesn't have the best range uh, and he's just not a good fielder overall. If we look at SIS Baseball's data, it has him as one of the worst defenders in the league to his right. Um, he is actually okay going up the middle. And he ha I think he has shown little improvements here and there. UZR has him at, at zero this year, which is good. Uh, and I've seen him make some really, really nice plays before. So, you know, I think he's probably more naturally suited for third base. Uh, we'll see what happens when first base, or rather first round pick, Seiya Yokoyama is ready. Maybe he does end up moving to second or third, but Koribayashi, I would say, deserves to be an all-star tier, just because the bat is so good. And if he can just improve the fielding a little bit more, then he can be in that elite territory. All right, Tatsuki Mizuno for Nippon Ham. I don't have all that much to say on him, just because we haven't seen much of him. This is his first year getting a shot to be an everyday player, um, and he's doing a decent job so far he has a 98 wrc plus he does strike out a lot but has some sneaky pop to make up for it uh defense is average to below average i would say uh i kind of thought daigo kamikawabata or taiki narama would be the guy for the fighters at short 
uh, going into this year, but Mizuno did well on the form last year, uh, and he impressed enough in spring training to to get the job. Uh, he has speed, and you know I I would say right now he's doing what he has to do. You know he doesn't have to be flashy; just make the routine plays and provide some stability for them because the rest of the infield is it can be really shaky. Um, I am going to put him next to Kinami in in borderline starter tier just because he hasn't proven himself yet. Like I can't say based on uh, a two month sample that he's ready to be with some of these guys who are more proven. Um, but you know, I, I would say at, at just 23 years old, uh, he can def- definitely move up a, a, a tier or two by the end of the year. But with the strikeout rate and some of the other things, uh, I have some concerns. So he's going to be towards the bottom. The Carp are the only team that I picked two players from just because Kaito Kozono is the primary guy, but uh, Masa Yano has actually been playing uh, shortstop more this year. Uh, and I don't think Yano is bad. You know, he has a good eye. Uh, he takes his walks. He's a solid defender, but he doesn't hit the ball hard. He doesn't have any power. Uh, and I think he has been given enough opportunities now on the top team in the last, you know, three, four years where... We know that he's not going to give you much in the way of offense. Career slugging percentage of 237. So I have to put him at the bottom. I will put him in front of the base stars, guys. But um, yeah, so Kazono, you know, he was a top prospect once once upon a time, going back to like 2018, 2019. Um, and he had his fair share of struggles on both sides of the ball early on, which isn't surprising when you throw an 18-year-old into the fire right away. But he has grown. He really has grown. Uh, he used to miss some very routine plays and even basic things like his footwork, the moves at shortstop. He didn't look natural there. Uh, so I was concerned about his future. I thought he would probably end up at second base. But much like Kuribayashi, he's made small gains every year. And now he's been close to league average or better at the plate since 2021. He has a 119 weighted runs created plus since the start of 2023. Uh, we know he has sneaky power, even though he hasn't shown it yet. In 2024, he, uh, I, I think he can run into double-digit homers because he hit six homers in just 80 games last year. Um, you know, probably would benefit from pulling the ball more. Um, and, yeah, I mean, even things like slapping the ball the other way, getting an infield hit out of it, that's part of his game as well because he is very, very fast. So Kozono, that makes him kind of a hybrid in my opinion. He is a free swinger, so probably should not be at the top of the lineup in my opinion. But Hiroshima's lineup is so terrible that they have him hitting third or cleanup a lot. You know, I would feel a lot better if he was like the number six hitter. Uh, He doesn't have extreme splits, and he's not striking out at all this year. Uh, K rate is like 6%. um, And he got some experience at the national team level recently. So I I do think Kozono is kind of like the left-handed version of of, uh, Kuribayashi, and therefore I'm going to put him in all-star tier. Last but not least, it's Itsuki Murabayashi for Rakuten. Uh, Murabayashi, up until like the second half of last year, hadn't done much of anything at the MPB level. Uh, he debuted way back in 2017, uh, and he's just been kind of a tweener ever since then. Has had some chances at the top level, mostly as like a defensive replacement type of guy. But he took the job from Yamasaki last year, and he hasn't looked back. WRC Plus of almost exactly 100 over the past two seasons. He has some speed. He plays a solid shortstop. uh, And looking back at some of his farm numbers over the years, he has a very good walk rate too. Uh, He hasn't quite shown that at the MPB level yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, as he gets more comfortable at the MPB level, starts taking more pitches, taking more walks. Um, He makes a lot of hard contact as well. So, you know, too much of it is on the ground, so the Babip gods aren't going to be very friendly to him going forward, probably. But yeah, I think Murabayashi is a perfectly adequate shortstop, uh, one of the very few right-handed hitters uh, on this list as well. Um, so that means we have four guys here in average tier. Makoto Kadawaki looks like he needs a friend, so I am going to move uh, Muramatsu up one because why not? You know, he's been one of the best hitters, uh, best players in the league. Period. Actually, in terms of WAR. So there you have it. In the elite tier, I have Sosuke Genda of the Cebu Lions, Kenta Imamiya of the SoftBank Hawks. In the All-Star tier, I have Kotaro Koribayashi of the Oryx Buffaloes, Kaito Kozono of the Hiroshima Carp. In the above average tier, I have Makoto Kadawaki of the Yomiuri Giants, Kaito Muramatsu of the Chunichi Dragons. In the average tier, 
I have Atsuki Tomosugi of the Lote Marines, Hideki Nagaoka of the Yakult Swallows, Itsuki Murabayashi of the Rakuten Eagles. In the borderline starter tier, I have Tatsuki Mizuno of the Nippon Ham Fighters, Seiya Kinami of the Hanshin Tigers. In the bench player tier, I have Masaya Yano of the Hiroshima Carp, and then technically uh, Yota Kyoda of the DNA Bay Stars, but really any player is who he represents. Any shortstop for the DNA Bay Stars is at the very, very bottom at this point. But that just about does it. Please let me know what you think, because obviously I can't watch every single one of these guys all the time. Um, so I'm curious if you're a fan of one of these players, um, what you think. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.